This video is sponsored by my friend Thomas Brush and his course Full-Time Game Dev. Get a massive 40% off discount using the promo in the description. More on that later. The third Blackthorn Prod Game Jam just took place. Game developers from the great wide world made a game in one week. The theme they all had to base their game around was Less is More. Armed with the Unity game engine, Visual Studio for programming, Adobe Photoshop, in a nice thick notebook, I joined the fun and ended up creating the Twisted Factory. A puzzle card game about dismantling dark, polluting machinery. In this video, I'll share my game making experience, and in the next, we'll highlight some of my personal favorite games from the jam, made by this extremely talented community. So I think now is a good time to thank everyone who took part, made a game, and chatted with me on Discord. It's been a blast. So I announced the theme on a brisk Saturday morning, and a few moments later, headed outside to think of game ideas. I tried a simple meditation technique to come up with interesting, creative concepts. Basically, ask yourself a question, such as, what is a great game idea? And then you wait, relaxed, not focusing too hard on internal chit-chat, but rather content on following the breath or observing the scenery, and soon an idea will magically pop into existence. Some of mine included being a looting dragon whose flying height and speed would be impacted by the amount of treasure being carried. Another idea was controlling an overburdened developer with 10 arms trying to multitask. The theme Less is More also brought pleasing visual images to mind, perhaps an extremely minimalist adventure set against a simple white backdrop and you would control a tiny, inky character facing giant silhouettes. I also really like the idea of decluttering and simplifying things to achieve more peace of mind. So a game where you need to run around a bedroom cleaning up rogue socks or turning cogs and switching wires in a giant head to clear mental clutter were all little game visions I toyed with. What ended up really sticking though was the idea of a card game where you want to destroy your own deck. Each card would have hit points and energy cost and a special effect. You would need to play them in the right order, create combos, and manage your precious energy in order to clear a level. Sounded cool to me, plus I've wanted to make a card game for a very long time. Before finding out more, I recommend you play the game. You'll probably enjoy learning about how it was made all the more if you do. With that said, I began scribbling some prototype artwork in Photoshop. I decided the player could have a maximum of 10 cards in game and the rest would be in his or her deck, or queue as I later called it. After some programming, I had the first card up and running. When clicked on, it would allow you to draw a card from your queue. Cards would represent machine parts of a giant, polluting underground factory. So I made some green hills so that the cards would be placed in there, planning to make a poor village up here close to ruin because of the toxic fumes. This also explains why you'll be trying to destroy every card in game, it's all to save the innocent lives up here. I wanted to get a clearer vision for the card art, so I made a chunky piece of tech. This really helped with motivation. I can get a little idea how the game might end up looking and feeling. With a handy list of card ideas in my notebook, I began designing two new machine parts. One that would let you duplicate any other machine in game, and another that deals one damage to everything. I also imported into the project one of my favorite asset packs, the all-in-one shader. This allows for a ton of cool effects, but the only one I used here is the hand-drawn look, which creates a subtle wobble in your sprites. I then increase the wobble amount via script whenever the player hovers the mouse cursor over a machine. This gives some nice feedback and a little movement without the need for actual animations. I made a video right before the jam full of handy tips and tricks on getting the most out of a game jam experience. One of these tips was all about nice refreshing breaks. So I called it a day, very pleased with the progress made. The next day I drew the village and also changed the lush green background to something more muddy, polluted and yucky. Looking back, this was clearly not a priority, and I should have perhaps been spending my time on making more cards and beginning work on designing puzzles. But that's just the magic of hindsight. At the time, nailing the visuals, context, and mood just seemed very important. And heck, contrary to many game jams where developers only have a weekend to make a game, the Blackthorn Prod game jam always lasts a whole week. There was still plenty of time. Still in line with the visuals and polish, I replaced the basic blank squares 
with something a little more intricate and machine-like, as well has worked on particles and game juice for when a card is destroyed. I also made some nice UI to illustrate the player's energy and Q. Plus, when you hover over something, there's a helpful pop-up with some explanations. The world was really coming to life. Before diving into the world of puzzle design, I had a couple more cards I wanted to create. One is a weird organic thing, which contrasts with the more tech designs, and which would grant you energy. Another is a healer, allowing you to boost the HP of any card in game. Then I made a monstrous green machine part, which would simply cost 3 energy and deal 3 damage. So here's level 1, the game at its simplest. You start with 4 machines in game, and 1 in the queue. Remember the game goal is to destroy all machines, and to destroy one you need to set its HP to 0, which these buggers will happily do by dealing 3 damage. However, I first must use one energy to use this machine part, and draw a machine from the queue. If I destroy this one first, then there's no way for me to draw, and so I'll need to restart the level. So once I draw, again I mustn't rush and destroy everything, I'll first need to use this machine which costs 0, and provides me with 2 energy, but takes 1 damage. When it reaches 0 HP, it's destroyed, but now I have 12 energy instead of 8, which will be enough to destroy all remaining machines using this ability, which costs 3. So as you can see, careful planning, reading of each card's ability, and managing energy will be key to successfully solving puzzles. I was making good progress, and throughout the week enjoyed reading, chilling, and a new creative hobby, sculpting. These little pauses just make all the difference. Here's a little Hollow Knight figurine I made using Monster Clay. It's just so satisfying to use, going from the digital game dev world to something very tactile like sculpting is an awesome contrast. I also created a little Blackthorn Prod mascot, a twirly octopus sea creature, a cute little turret, and a grinning mushroom. Okay, new machine part time. Let me introduce you to this angry block, which deals massive damage to everything when destroyed. Which can be awesome, since the goal is to get rid of all machines, but you also need to watch out and not destroy it too soon. If not, you won't be able to draw any more machines from the queue, for example. Then there's this bleak metal skeleton which takes 1 damage whenever you use a machine part. It kind of acts like dead weight to be quickly drawn and dispatched. A personal favourite is this bomb-like machine. Whenever you use something, the timer will tick down a notch. After you use 7 machine parts, the timer will reach 0, and this nasty piece of filth will get a grand smacking total of 9,999 HP. Basically game over, so the challenge is to destroy it before the point of no return. This card should help with that, it deals 1 damage to everything whenever you use another machine. Again, this is good and bad, since some machines must remain in game for a little while to perform their special effects, like gaining energy, drawing and healing. It was a real joy having all these cards to mess around with, mix and match, and create puzzles. At first I would try imagining a puzzle on paper, picturing exactly how it would play out. This turned out to be quite challenging, like moving blindly in the dark. What worked best was just randomly tossing some cards in-game and in the queue, and playing. Obviously the level would be a mess and need lots of fixing, but there would be a start, and just by trying and combining and removing, it's almost as if the levels would slowly design themselves, without the tedious and difficult planning beforehand. I had the mechanics, it was just about discovering what worked, and how the machines interacted with each other. For the last level, a creative sandbox seemed in order. Players would have access to many of the game's machines, and would need to take down this boss, who every few turns would spawn an explosive timer card. There's no right or wrong way to go about doing this. The players can be quite creative. Some might choose to duplicate a ton of angry faces, getting ready for massive burst damage, while others may prefer a slower approach of nibbling one damage at a time using these spiky devils. With only two days left, it was time to tie many loose ends. Namely, creating a main menu, adding sounds to this world, as well as music and cutscenes for story. But I felt like the hard part was done, and two days seemed pretty massive. So I made the main menu, and then, since I don't really enjoy creating sound effects from scratch, I used another great asset pack, the Ultimate Sound Effects Pack. The challenge was to find the right ones, and implement them. I always try and have a variety of subtle differences for every interaction, 
For example, when you hover over a machine, there's a pop sound. But instead of always keeping that same pop, I randomly change the pitch via code, so every pop is a little different. Same when hovering over UI, or when a machine is destroyed. Either I change the pitch, which is a great way to get different results using only one sound effect, or I create an array of different sounds and pick one at random. After having a few people playtest, I could clearly see that they had trouble grasping the rules. So I needed to explain my game with a tutorial. A block of text was out of the question, way too confusing. So I went down the slightly harder road and made a few simple step-by-step -step explanations. Judging from the awesome feedback on itch.io, a few people still had trouble grasping the rules initially, but then understood after a few moments. So, of course, this tutorial can be greatly improved, but it did the trick for the gem. Realizing about one day before the deadline that there was still no music, I was going to opt for the simple solution of downloading something from the YouTube audio library. But I threw caution to the wind and asked a fellow dev and great music composer Milan Svankara if he was up for a challenge and make music for the Twisted Factory. Again, like he did for Squabbles and the Nixmind project, he delivered something really neat. And then only a couple hours. I could wrap it all up by creating a little intro and outro cutscene. And then sat back, hit launch and chill out. I loved creating this game. Sure, like every single project under the sun, there's times that are boring or unsatisfying or tedious, but the overall journey and experience was excellent. Interacting with the community throughout the jam and hearing about their own progress was also very motivating. I'm super eager to work on larger games, but I know for certain that I'll never give up on game jams while I'm a game developer. It's such a great way to build momentum and come up with ideas. Again, you can play The Twisted Factory on itch.io for free. You'll also find there dozens and dozens of other Game Jam games I've made. If you feel like it, you can even explore my two bigger commercial games, The Dreadful Whispers, which is a puzzle platformer full of strange creatures and unique mechanics, like The Reveal, which allows you to see a second spooky side to the world, or the project I'm perhaps the most proud of, Dashing Fire, it's a roguelike where you dash between tiny, monster-infested planets, encountering giant bosses between levels, upgrading your fiery hero in the merchant world, and soaking in squishy lore. Okay, thanks so much for watching. This video is sponsored by indie developer and YouTuber Thomas Brush. He's been making indie games for pretty much every platform for the last decade including his latest game, Never Song, on Nintendo Switch and Steam. Thomas had to work extremely hard, but now makes six figures a year to support his family and studio. He let me try out his latest project, a comprehensive online platform called Full Time Game Dev, with over 800 students. And there's just so much to learn here. Not only will you learn how to actually make a game from scratch, but you're also going to learn how to actually make money from your game and do it full time. You'll learn about publishers, crowdfunding, building a personal brand, marketing, bundles, and a strategic method to securing a slot on the Steam front page. There's a massive 40% discount for the first 300 students that use the link in the description and the coupon code NOAH. Last time he ran a sale like this, the codes were eaten up within the first couple hours. Click below if you're interested and begin your indie game dev journey. With that said, I hope you enjoyed the video and see you soon for the community game jam video. Cheers.